Hey guys, uh, Dagger Matt here again for a, another episode of Dagger Matt Militaria. And uh, today I have a couple of uh, different uh, daggers that I'll be going over with you fine folks today. Um, as always, I'll be drinking a Coors Light. Bud Light has been taken off the uh, docket list for Matt Gibbs' beers of choice. My wife's rolling her eyes at me as we speak. Um, anyway, guys, <clears throat> so what I have here today is I have an SS dagger uh, that I just got in. So this SS dagger, hopefully from our my videos you guys can now tell, this is an early SS dagger because it does have nickel silver, silver fittings, a nice set nickel silver eagle, and a beautifully set roundel. <clears throat> um, the fruitwood grip. Um, is in nice shape. A lot of times you see these chipped. It was a more fragile uh, type of wood that they used when they made these daggers. The scabbard um, was once anodized. It is not uncommon to see these period painted as the anodized finish did not hold up very well. And if you were a self-respecting SS man, you want it to look as good as you could. So this does have uh, a repaint. You can see the original anodized finished underneath. Okay, so that being said on the back of this, <clears throat> there is no district mark. Not uncommon on this particular maker to not see a district mark, as you guys know, or hopefully you do know. Um, it was either a Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, or a Roman numeral three, and that identified one of the three SS districts um, for uh, the SS daggers. Um, this particular dagger is overall in very good shape, the pommel nut, um, does not have any signs of wear and tear, um, so I would venture to say that this dagger has not been a part. The scabbard screws are in very, very good condition. The only one that's a little bit buggered is this guy right here, but since this is a period repaint, it's not uncommon to see that. The other three screws are in very, very good condition. This particular one probably gave whoever took this dagger apart difficulty when they repainted it. Um, because as I could tell, this was an off, um, they took the uh, fittings off to paint the dagger. So let's take a look at the dagger. So a little bit different than we're accustomed to seeing on SA daggers. Okay, SA daggers have Adas for Deutschland, everything for Germany on the uh, blades. SS daggers have Mein Ehr heißt Troy, my honor is loyalty. Okay, on the reverse of this, is the SS runs underneath is 12034 in the RZM code. So 12034 at this point is an unknown maker. Okay, 12034, we don't know who made this dagger. However, more than likely it was made by EPAC. Okay, that's where this dagger's been attributed to, uh, been produced by, and I'm pretty sure that that's who made this particular dagger. Um, so 12034 EPAC, great manufacturer, nice early dagger with the nickel silver fittings, beautiful uh, blade to lower guard fitting, okay, and a really nice inset eagle. So everything we're really looking for, great maker. Um, these SS ruins on the blade are highly desirable. Um, people like this maker because it does have the SS ruins on it, makes it a touch more valuable, okay. So that's the SS dagger. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, next to that, we have what is called a DLV flyer dagger. Okay, This is an early Luftwaffe dagger. And <clears throat> one thing about this particular piece is it has all aluminum fittings. The blade has a little bit of polish to it. Um, it does have a little bit of cross grain to it, but it's clearly it's been polished and the maker's mark is no longer present. Okay, so who made this dagger? I know who made this dagger because there was only one company that produced all aluminum DLV flyer daggers and that was Helbig. So let's talk about my friends over at Helbig. Um, the first introduction I had to Helbig was a first model Luftwaffe uh, that I bought in the rain at night um, I went with my flashlight to look at this particular dagger and I couldn't really make out the maker's mark. I could tell that the uh, first model loaf was an authentic one, so I, I bought it for $400. Uh, 
And when I got it home, I looked at the maker mark and I'm like, uh oh, what's wrong with that maker mark? Looked like a five year old child did it. Okay, so hell big, um, as I later found, have terrible mark, maker, maker marks. Uh, I bought a pair of absolutely stone mint NSKKs a few years ago, and they were M773, which was hell big. Um, they looked like that they the inscription was done with an etch a sketch. The maker mark was absolutely atrocious on them. So uh, Helbig was not known for very deep or quality maker mark, and it does not surprise me that this particular DLV flyer, um, which is in very nice condition, does not have a maker mark on it. Um, you know the Moroccan leather on the grip and on the uh, scabbard looked to be in really good shape. The nickel silver fittings are in good shape. The blade is pretty nice. Um, but like I said, uh, we know that Helbig produced this dagger and unfortunately their maker marks did not hold up very well. So new SS, new uh, DLV, um, both daggers that I just got in and I'm very happy to have them both. This SS is absolutely gorgeous. That I'm just really blown away with the condition of it. Um, as always, um, thank you for watching my videos. Um, we really appreciate you guys subscribing. We're over 300 subscriber. I have over 60, 65,000 views on all my videos. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll continue to make uh, additional content as uh, these daggers come in. Like I said, I sell anywhere but five to 10 daggers a week. Get a new product every single day. I'm expecting a few SS SAs in tomorrow. So I'll share those with you when they arrive. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you don't know what you're buying, know who you're buying from. Dagger Matt's a great place to get your daggers.